Welcome! In this video I will help you prove that different representations of gamma matrices are actually equivalent. So something we have talked about in the past is that at the moment when you actually want to write down one of the gamma matrices, whether it is gamma 0 or gamma 1 or whatever, there are many different possibilities that you can take. All of them satisfy the conditions of gamma matrices, but they are different. And I have said that they are equivalent, right? And they have to be, right? They represent the same physics. It's simply a different mathematical representation. So now I will actually prove it, okay? So something that is uh, very important is that we have to understand what really we mean uh, when we are talking about different representations. So if we have one way of writing down the gamma matrices and also another one, we have to have a way of going from one to the other. And we will do it by using this transformation matrix X, S, sorry, which is going to be unitary. That means that S times S dagger is the same as S dagger S, which is going to be one. Or rather the, the identity, but you know that we are, we always have this implicit um, four by four identity matrix, which we, we don't always write down. Sometimes we do for emphasis, sometimes we don't. So the uh, thing that we will do is keep in mind that what we are talking about is saying, okay, so we have one representation where we have these gamma mu matrices, and then we have another one, and we will call them gamma mu, and let's just say prime. You can use different notations, let's just call it that way. And to go from this to the other, we are going to multiply by S and S dagger. So that's um, just a very common way of writing down these transformations. We will actually do it uh, in the future as well, once we start going into the covariance of the Dirac equation very shortly. So this is the equation that basically tells us how we go from gamma mu to some other representation, right? We multiply by these S and S dagger matrices that are unitary. So if all of these representations are equivalent, we expect that the gamma mu prime also satisfy their own version of the Clifford algebra, right? This is the Clifford algebra, something incredibly important that we always have to remember, but this is what defines literally everything regarding gamma matrices. Everything comes from there. Okay, so if physics is the same, then the Clifford algebra still has to hold if we are using a different representation. So let's calculate the commutator. So let's calculate gamma mu prime, right? The transformed version, the new version, gamma nu prime. And let's see what we get. And this is, of course, the anti-commutator. I don't know if I said commutator. I hope I said anti. Right? Some people write this with uh, these curly brackets. I don't like to do that because you can get confused with the Poisson bracket, but it's notation. It doesn't matter. So let's here just uh, write first multiply through. So we get gamma mu prime times gamma nu prime plus gamma nu prime gamma mu prime. Okay, now let's write down what each one of these things is, right? Keeping this in mind. So this would be S times gamma mu S dagger. And now comes the next one. I will change colors. S gamma nu S dagger plus, let's change colors again, S gamma nu and then S dagger. And I, <laughs> I need more space. And then we have again S gamma mu S dagger. But notice that we have S dagger S, S dagger S. And we know that these transform transformations are unitary as transformations uh, have to be so that they don't end up changing the physics. So these things are simply one, we can get rid of them. So now we have an S multiplying from the left, from the left, and S dagger from the right, S dagger from the right. So we can factor them out. So we get S factor of gamma mu gamma nu plus gamma nu gamma mu uh, times s dagger. So what we have inside is simply the anti-commutator of gamma mu gamma nu. This is s times gamma mu gamma nu times s dagger. And we know what that anti-commutator is. It is two times eta mu nu times s dagger there, right? But eta mu nu is a number, 
It may be 0, 1 or minus 1 depending on what the values of mu and nu are, but it's simply a number, so we can take it out to the front. So we get 2 eta mu nu, and then we have s s dagger, which is 1, so eta mu nu is what the commutator of gamma mu prime, gamma nu prime are, the anti-commutator. I think I said commutator again, anti-commutator. Um, so what this means is that even if you use a different representation, it's still valid, right? You still get the Clifford algebra and that's all that matters. So you can use any representation that you want. The Clifford algebra still holds, which means that all the conclusions that come from it still hold. So there you go. That's just a, a quick, quick proof so that you can use whatever representation you want, whether it is uh, Dirac or Majorana or anyone that you like and do it without any guilt. So yeah, I hope that this video was useful to you. If it was, please make sure to leave a like on the video, comment and subscribe, and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. So I'll see you in another video. Thank you very much for watching.